Welcome to Turf Talks and the Virtual Helpline. These live sessions will take place every Tuesday in September at noon. The sessions will be recorded for later viewing on the Henrico Extension website. My name is Terry Lotzenheiser and I'm the Horticulture Technician in Henrico County. Virginia Cooperative Extension brings research-based information to the localities we serve. Our master gardeners are a trained group of volunteers who extend the extension resources and programs available. The Henrico Extension Office is always here for you to diagnose plant problems and answer all your plant-related questions using research-based information. The Henrico Office can be reached at 804-501-5160. At this time, our office is not open for walk-in consultations, so please call with your questions or you're welcome to use our Ask an Expert link on our website at extension.us slash extension. Today's session is being led by Davis Caskey. Davis became a Henrico Master Gardener in 2015. Davis is part of our Smart Lawns program. Our Smart Lawn program was suspended for the 2020 year due to COVID, but should be back in 2021. Check our website in late March for information. Davis is also one of our speakers in the Speaker Bureau's program. If you have any questions for Davis, please type them in the chat box. At the conclusion of Davis's presentation, we will answer those questions related to his presentation and then answer any other home and gardening questions that you might have. Davis, go ahead and let's begin speaking about fertilizers. Thank you. Uh, thanks to, uh, to everybody for joining us today. Uh, we're uh, going to uh, discuss fertilizers, which is the third uh, uh, part of our series of four. Uh, you uh, have learned in the previous sessions the, uh, the value of, uh, uh, of, of getting your soil tested uh, and uh, in uh, lawn aeration. And uh, if you've done all of that, you're now prepared to uh, move to the next stage. Uh, if you haven't done all of that, uh, you're still uh, in the game. Uh, because uh, you can certainly get that done and uh, get your lawn started. We've had a very wet uh, August this year, uh, and so uh, uh, it's a bit delayed. Uh, and if you're a bit delayed in getting it started, you're still in good shape. Uh, today, we want to talk about fertilizers. You're not moving down. There we go. We, uh, I've really discussed some of the common uh, lawn questions about how much lime do I use? Well, you use lime only if, uh, uh, if you need to use lime uh, and uh, uh, a soil test will determine that. Aerate, you need to aerate virtually every year uh, because the soils in the Richmond area uh, and Henrico area uh, tend to get, uh, get very compacted uh, and grass needs uh, air uh, just as uh, other plants. Uh, what are the numbers on the fertilizer bag? That's what we're going to talk about today. And then next week's session, we'll cover uh, uh, the pests and the, that you may encounter after you establish your yard. Smart Lawns has the answers and uh, Terry has, uh, has discussed that we have delayed the program this year, but hopefully we'll be back next year. Uh, this is a supplement to that. It's important to know your soil, get your soil tested to know if you need lime. You don't need to spend money on something that uh, you may not need. Uh, you need to measure uh, your yard to determine how much, uh, uh, how much fertilizer you may need. Uh, aerate the roots as we've discussed and then uh, use the right fertilizer and uh, hopefully you'll have a trouble-free maintenance after you get your yard established. Uh, be right about fertilizer. Uh, there are, uh, fertilizers do a lot of good things, but uh, if fertilizers run off into our streams, they can also do, uh, have some very negative consequences. Uh, the, uh, the phosphorus in fertilizer uh, can, uh, can uh, go, go with, the, uh, uh, with the sediments and so forth uh, and uh, pollute streams. And uh, even though uh, the, uh, the fertilizer was put down in Richmond, uh, it may end up in the Chesapeake Bay uh, and cause an algae bloom and the, and the fish kill and the things that go with that. So non-point, even though it's, uh, uh, it's put in in Richmond or put in at some other place or further upstream, uh, it will eventually end up wherever the river drains. Soil sedimentation uh, is, is always an issue. Construction sites uh, 
uh, need to be uh, maintained uh, so that when we get the heavy rains uh, that you don't get the sedimentation running off uh, because the sedimentation can carry these nutrients and again uh, it, it both erodes the soil uh, deposits in our rivers uh, and can cause uh, uh, notable damage uh, uh, vegetation blooms and so forth in the uh, in the in our bays. Healthy lawns of uh, some people. Well, why fertilize? Uh, healthy lawns protect the soil. They hold the soil in place. Uh, they don't allow erosion to occur. So uh, a dense turf is uh, is really a very good guard uh, against uh, uh, much of the erosion that we may encounter. Now we mentioned measuring the yard, and uh, some of this uh, looks uh, looks to be a bit uh, technical of the, the the pi r squares and so forth. Uh, but uh, in general, you need to know uh, within a within a, uh, a few hundred feet uh, of the size of your yard. Uh, you can measure it by uh, by using some of these formulations: the lip, the length, and the widths, and so forth. But if you just measure the the entire width of your yard and the entire depth of your yard. And put those two together, and and if you have some uh, uh, large areas that are not covered in turf, you can uh, subtract a few square feet. But know within uh, uh, within a few hundred square feet uh, of uh, what size your yard is. You need to know if it's 5,000 square feet or 7,000 square feet. Uh, you don't necessarily need to know that it's 5,326. Which which one is right for your yawn? Well, so many people uh, tend to go to the store and, uh, and ask the person, say, well, what's everybody using? Uh, and that's probably not the, the right thing to do, although you may get some good advice from, uh, from time to time. Uh, let's talk about the, the labeling of fertilizer. Uh, all fertilizers have three numbers on them. Uh, the, uh, uh, and uh, generally, it's across the top of the bag. But uh, in today's world, uh, some are uh, hiding it uh, at the bottom. Uh, so find those numbers. Those numbers represent three things. The first number is the amount of nitrogen uh, in, the, uh, in the bag of fertilizer. The second uh, is the amount of phosphorus. And the third is the amount of potassium. So if you just remember the letters NPK, you, uh, you can determine uh, what's, uh, what's in the fertilizer. Now, it's a little bit simplistic, but generally the, uh, the first number, the nitrogen, uh, we can say that's what makes things green. That uh, affects the top of the grass, the top of the plant. Uh, the phosphorus, uh, the middle number, uh, is, uh, uh, describes uh, what uh, uh, stimulates the growth of the plant. And phosphorus is the one that uh, can attach to sediment and uh, can travel down our rivers and so forth. So we have to be uh, particularly careful of that. Uh, the last number uh, is the potassium, uh, and it affects root growth more than anything else. So that is uh, perhaps a little bit oversimplified, but the, the NPK, if you can remember what each of those does, it will be a good uh, background for understanding this. So let's look at this particular bag of fertilizer, 16, 4, and 8. Uh, and the total nitrogen is 16%. Uh, and then it will give you a, a, a sub number on that. Uh, in this particular case, it's 5.6 of water insoluble nitrogen. Generally, you like to have uh, uh, about half of the amount of uh, nitrogen that's in the fertilizer uh, being water insoluble. What that means is it will stay around a bit longer uh, because it will slowly dissolve and be released over uh, uh, a few days. Uh, if the entire uh, nitrogen content is water soluble, uh, it will be released and readily available very quickly and go away very quickly. So you want to generally want about half of uh, the nitrogen uh, to be water insoluble or wind. The available uh, uh, phosphorus uh, in this particular case is, uh, is 4% uh, and the amount of uh, potassium uh, is 8%. So uh, well, what, do, what do all these numbers mean? If we had a 100-pound bag of, uh, of fertilizer, that this 100-pound uh, this bag would contain 16 pounds of nitrogen, 4 pounds of phosphorus, and 8 pounds of uh, potassium. Uh, if, you, if you look at this in a slightly different way, the 16, 4, and 8 is really a, a ratio of 4, 1 to 2. So that means you have four parts of, uh, of potassium, uh, four parts of uh, nitrogen, one part of phosphorus, and two parts of, uh, 
uh, of potassium. Uh, so some of your numbers may change. If you bought a bag uh, of fertilizer that was eight, two, and four, it would be essentially the uh, uh, same, uh, delivering the same amount, uh, but it would uh, uh, require a, uh, a larger volume, a larger weight of the fertilizer uh, to, uh, uh, to yield the same amount of, uh, of nitrogen. Starters for, uh, for, uh, for low potassium. If you uh, are starting your yard, you're seeding it this year or overseeding it, generally your first fertilization, uh, you want to contain some phosphorus, the middle number. Uh, so uh, you'll look for that as a starter fertilizer. Uh, if you uh, have a, a second application in October and a third application in November, uh, you'll uh, likely uh, want to reduce the amount of the phosphorus, that center number, and in fact, uh, many of the fertilizers available for the second and third feedings uh, will be uh, something like 24012. Uh, a winterizer this time of year, uh, you uh, have uh, an existing lawn, uh, even if you're overseeding, uh, you want to stimulate root growth because that's going to do uh, a lot of good things for you both during the winter uh, and next spring. So uh, something, if you have a, a soil test that is low in potassium, uh, you want to assure that the, uh, the third component uh, is uh, reasonably high in the fertilizer that you select. The timing is, uh, as we discussed, is generally in September when you put uh, uh, your lime, if you need lime, uh, you put uh, your fertilizer and your seed down. You can do the, both at the same time. You don't need to uh, wait and do one, uh, uh, one day and then wait uh, a few days to do the second. Uh, you can put all three down if you want to. And that generally is, uh, is our September feeding. Uh, and again, if you use uh, uh, phosphorus to stimulate uh, the growth, uh, you'll use most of it during that point in time. October and November are follow-up feedings. Generally should be about a month apart. So if you're doing it on the 20th of the month, uh, shoot for the 20th of the month for the, uh, the, for the follow-up called the SUN program, September, October, and November. There's some real advantages of uh, a fall fertilization, uh, even if you're not starting uh, an entirely new yard. Uh, the, uh, uh, it increase, increases the, uh, the root growth, which is going to mean you have a very healthy grass when spring uh, occurs next year. It, uh, it increases the density of your grass, and this is extraordinarily important uh, in keeping the weed problems down because a dense grass does not allow uh, uh, the, uh, the weeds to come through. Uh, the, uh, it's going to decrease your spring mowing because you'll actually have a turf that is heavier and thicker uh, and not trying to grow just tall and springly. Uh, increased drought, drought tolerance uh, when we finally do get into the Julys and August uh, a healthy grass uh, that has, uh, 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 has that's well established uh, will weather the uh, the drought much better. Uh, you have uh, any healthy uh, healthy grass or healthy plant uh, is more resistant to diseases, uh, and certainly uh, the one thing that we all like we like that nice fall green color uh, and it to be maintained in the spring. Uh, for the, the applications of nitrogen, the recommendation from the Extension Service is that you put one pound of nitrogen down for each 1,000 square feet of yard. So that means, uh, let's uh, look at a, a, a typical yard. A typical yard probably is at least 5,000 square feet, uh, but you've measured it and you know exactly what it is. Uh, and uh, we need to get a pound of nitrogen down in September, another pound of nitrogen uh, down in October, and then a follow-up uh, uh, in November or early December. You may also, in, estab in establishing a new yard, particularly if you've uh, uh, reseeded heavily, uh, you may find it beneficial to put a small amount, generally about a half pound per thousand square feet, uh, down in, uh, in the spring of next year, uh, somewhere uh, in uh, mid-May uh, uh, mid to, uh, to mid-June. Uh, this again uh, will uh, help turn the lawn green and give it a good start uh, and that's generally it uh, takes advantage of the rainfall during that period as well. How to calculate uh, the the amount. Uh, it looks like a uh, uh, an onerous uh, formulation but it's really fairly simple. Uh, the desired amount of nitrogen you want per thousand square feet uh, which in this case is going to be one. 
uh, over the percentage of nitrogen in the fertilizer. We look on the bag, uh, and uh, if the bag says uh, uh, 16, then that's the percent of fertilizer in that uh, times, uh, times 100. So uh, we, uh, and that will give us the number of pounds per thousand square feet. For the example, a uh, pound uh, uh, of using 16, we take one pound is what we want. 16% is what uh, uh, the uh, fertilizer bag contains times 100, and that's 6.25 pounds per 100 per thousand square feet. If we have a 5,000 uh, square foot yard, how much do uh, how much uh, nitrogen do we need? We need five times that amount, or uh, uh, roughly 31 pounds. Uh, the uh, uh, and again, uh, remember that it's per thousand square feet. So uh, if you uh, if you do uh, make the calculation, be sure to uh, apply it to the the size of yard you have. Today, uh, most people use either a drop or a rotary spreader. A uh, rotary spreader should probably become more popular than the drop, but both must be uh, calibrated. Uh, the, most of the, uh, the uh, fertilizers that are available today uh, usually will list on the back a, a number for the various uh, types of rotary spreaders and drop spreaders. Uh, and these are very helpful uh, uh, as a start because if you have to uh, uh, figure out how many pounds you need. You need 30 pounds of nitrogen, so you uh, put 30 pounds of fertilizer in that uh, spreader. Uh, what is the setting uh, that you need to, uh, to be sure that it's spread evenly? Because if you drop too much in one spot, uh, everybody has seen the fertilizer burn and it will kill the grass uh, uh, in that area. Uh, if, you, uh, uh, if you don't have a spreader that, uh, that is calibrated, uh, start with the amount of fertilizer that you need. In our example, uh, we're going to put in uh, uh, 30 pounds of, uh, uh, of fertilizer uh, into uh, our, our spreader uh, because uh, uh, we want to, uh, we have a 5,000 square foot yard uh, and we want it spread evenly. I would suggest starting with a very low number on the spreader and follow the basic pattern that you see uh, uh, that's, uh, that's shown in the, in the picture to the right. Uh, make a, uh, just simply go back and forth uh, one way and then go back and forth the other way. Uh, if you still have fertilizer uh, in your spreader, you can always put down more. It's always difficult to pick up what uh, is already down. Uh, you can uh, then reverse your pattern and put it uh, down slightly more. After you, slightly more fertilizer down. If you, uh, if you do this one year, uh, and you uh, determine about what that setting is for your, uh, for your spreader, um, make a note because uh, next year uh, you may not remember that number. It'll be very helpful to, uh, uh, to be able to come back uh, and start from that. I would suggest that you uh, make an investment in a spreader if you're going to use it year after year. Uh, there are certainly good spreaders available uh, and uh, uh, the better ones will have, uh, have, uh, have good numbers on them that you can trust. Uh, year after year. After you've used your spreader, be sure and clean it out because uh, a fertilizer will uh, certainly corrode certain uh, metal elements that may be in the, in the spreader. I've described the trial and error method. Uh, uh, I think this is uh, simply a, a, a better uh, vision uh, of it, uh, and, uh, uh, but, but do spread it thinly for the first time to determine what your uh, rotary spreader or your drop spreader uh, numbers may need to be. That uh, pretty much concludes the, our session today on fertilizers. Uh, if you uh, have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat box uh, and uh, uh, you will uh, uh, we'll try to respond to those. Uh, if you have follow-up questions, uh, we've listed the Enrico Extension Service uh, uh, address here uh, and feel free to call at any point in time. Uh, if you're interested in the Smart Lawns program for next year, uh, enrollment will begin in April of uh, 2021, uh, and a uh, uh, master gardener will help with all of the uh, the parts that uh, we have discussed in these this full part program. Thank you for a good program today, Kerry. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Davis, for a wonderful presentation. I'll give um, anybody a second if you have any questions, just type them down into the chat box, and we're happy to answer them. The wonderful thing about the Smart Lawn program is you get great master gardeners like Davis coming out to your yard and they'll help you with these measurements and help you interpret the soil test. 
If you take a soil test and you don't understand it, feel free to call the extension office at the number that's listed on the screen there to help you understand. As a follow-up, soil test kits are available uh, at the extension service. They're found just outside the door, so uh, uh, you don't have to come in. And they're available at all of the libraries uh, in Enrico County as well. So uh, I encourage you to uh, get that soil test and uh, uh, know where you start. Davis, we did get one question about putting down seed and fertilizer at the same time. Would you like to go over that again? Sure. Uh, the uh, uh, many uh, there, in the past, uh, there has been suggestions that you needed to put your lime down uh, and then uh, wait a bit uh, uh, and, and so forth. Uh, but it's perfectly acceptable to put all three down. If you know the amount of lime that you need, uh, you know the amount of fertilizer you need and the seed, I would put them down in that order so the seed is the, uh, the last thing you put down uh, so you don't walk on it uh, and going back and forth. Uh, but uh, you can certainly put it down at, uh, at any point in time. What about fertilizers with the uh, feed and weed fertilizer? Great is... question. Great question. If you're reseeding, you do not want to use a fertilizer that has weed killer in it, uh, even if it's a broad weed, leaf weed killer, uh, the, because uh, it will tend to stunt the new grass that's coming up. Uh, so. Uh, uh, I suggest for your, uh, your three fertilizations that you do, uh, particularly if you have, uh, have reseeded, uh, that you not use a uh, uh, fertilizer uh, with a, uh, uh, a weed uh, preventative. Now, if you're just fertilizing an existing yard and you're not putting any seed down, uh, then uh, uh, that's not as problematic. Uh, you can go ahead and use something, uh, a winterizer uh, with uh, uh, with the uh, with the weed and feed uh, program, but if you're using if you're putting down new seed, uh, don't uh, don't use uh, a uh, uh, something that has uh, a weed killer in it. A follow up question to that is when do you put the weed killer down? And I'm sure the label on the bag will give you definitive. Um, oh, after you have seeded, when do you put the weed killer down? Do you have a thought on that, Davis? Yes, yeah, so, but well, if you're, if, I would not put the weed killer down if you have reseeded, you seed down, even if you're just overseeding, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, certainly not if you're starting a new yard from scratch. Uh, but uh, uh, I would, uh, I would not use it uh, in any of the three. I would uh, wait and uh, and uh, wait until the spring when the grass uh, is established, uh, and at that point in time, uh, you can consider using. Uh, uh, something with a, uh, uh, a a weed killer in it, uh, a broad leaf uh, weed killer. That will give the grass uh, a chance to get established. Uh, it'll be a, a bit more rigorous in its growth, uh, and uh, it won't be as susceptible uh, to uh, uh, to the weed killer. But uh, uh, if you if you're if you're using uh, if, again, if you have a an established yard and you're not not putting uh, any new grass uh, new seed down. Uh, you can certainly use the weed killer uh, with your first application in uh, in September, uh, and it will uh, will knock back uh, some of the broadleaf plants. Thank you, Davis, for clarifying that. Our next turf talks and virtual helpline program will be next Tuesday, September the 29th. The topic that week will be proper identification of weeds and how do you control them. In this brief presentation, you will learn the importance about why you need to identify your lawn weed so you can apply the best control method. Thank you for your attendance and have a great rest of your day.